Hello, my name's Stephen Knight from Stephen Knight Training, and this is a Trainerscope presentation. Now, in a previous uh, episode of this particular series, we looked at preparing our document for conversion to PDF. So we've looked at heading styles, we've looked at adding tables of contents, we've applied some styles, uh, a font and a colour scheme, and it's all ready to go. And I'm assuming at this point you would have spell-checked it and done all that sort of stuff. So we've got two methods of converting. The first one is built into Office 2007, so we don't need Acrobat Standard or Professional for this. So I'm coming up to the Office button in the top left-hand corner. Now, I should just mention at this point what we're about to do works with Office 2010 as well. There's a few little variations, for example, in Office 2010, the orb in the top left hand corner here goes and has been replaced by another tab that says file. So I'm clicking on the office button and I'm coming down to save as. Now, so, I, and in save as I see PDF or XPS as an option here. Now, uh, you won't normally have this additional Adobe PDF option that I've got. I've got that option because I've got Acrobat installed on this particular machine. But what we should have in a standard install of Office 2007 is the option here, PDF or XPS. Now, you'll notice I'm just going to digress here for a moment and point to the Send option, and you'll notice Send as PDF here as well. You'll also notice Send as XPS, and I'll talk about that very shortly. So, uh, back up on our Save As and I'm choosing save as PDF or XPS and I get my dialog here to save. Now I'm going to choose to save as PDF but you will notice this option to save as XPS. XPS is latest Microsoft's latest attempt to knock off the PDF format or to provide a competitor for it. Uh, it is actually getting a bit of traction. Uh, I've had people asking on courses, what's XPS? People have been sending them XPS files. Uh, so it's an electronic document format. Uh, I have to do some more experimenting with it myself, but it seems to be fairly lean, lightweight, so you get a small file size out of it. Uh, some issues that will hold back XPS for a little bit. You need to be using Internet Explorer 8 or to get from the Microsoft website their free XPS viewer. So like the PDF, uh, Acrobat PDF Reader is free, Acrobat Reader is free, uh, XPS viewer is also free, but in a lot of your corporate environments you don't get to choose your browser and you can't just install software. And unfortunately there's still a lot of big corporates and some government agencies that are running with Internet Explorer 6. Now if you're running with IE6, you're not going to have any joy with XPS. So uh, for the moment I'd stick to PDF, but just bear in mind XPS exists. We'll see more of it, uh, I think, as, as a lot of the big corporates begin to ditch the old IE6 and move to a more up-to-date browser, you'll have either IE8 or you'll have the XPS viewer. So, But for the moment, we're talking PDF, so I've picked PDF. Now, I'm going to choose here minimum size. Now, if you're emailing and you've got uh, remote uh, users or maybe on poor internet connections, uh, particularly within Australia, remote areas, the internet connection's not real brilliant. In fact, it's a national disgrace, but don't get me started on that. Uh, so minimum size compromises the print quality a little bit, doesn't embed fonts, but it'll print at an acceptable standard at the other end. Uh, also, if you're putting it on an int intranet site or internet site where you've got a lot of remote users, perhaps uh, remote students, uh, then you might want to go for the minimum size. It is a compromise, but uh, your people downloading over poor quality internet connections will appreciate the little extra uh, that you're giving them by making that a bit smaller. Now while we're here, I'm going to click the Options button, and in my Options, uh, now I've already ticked a range of these, or it's remembered, 
from other exercises where I've done this is I would make sure that create bookmarks using headings, make sure that's on, uh, so that what it will do is it will create bookmarks that we can display in Acrobat. It'll make those available for our end user uh, based on the headings in the Word document. So that's just a nice little feature. We're going to convert all of the document, but you could select so that certain pages. Uh, and we definitely want that create bookmarks ticked using the headings because we used heading one, heading two, heading three. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go OK, and I'm going to say Publish. Now what's happened here is it's converted the document for me, and what I'd like to do now uh, is I'm going to open the document in Acrobat Reader so we can have a look at what it looks like. Here we are in Acrobat Reader. Now we've gained a few things by using our heading styles. The first thing we've got is a clickable table of contents. Now just to make this a bit easier to work with, I'm just going to increase the size of the the document on the in the window and I'm just moving down and we can now see here we're looking at uh, the table of contents you'll notice how this is giving me a little hand when I point to a heading in the table of contents and if I click it takes me to that part of the document so we gain some useful navigational advantages people can click on our table of contents now the second thing I'm going to do is come over here onto the left and click the bookmarks button here, the little bookmark with the little piece of cloth symbol there. Uh, and what this shows me now when I open the navigational panel is I can see here the structure of the document. And you'll notice how I'm unfolding it by clicking on the little plus and minus signs. So if it's a big document and I just want to jump to a particular area, I can click on a heading here in the bookmarks and it takes me to that particular place in the document and you'll notice there it is there. So if I click on a particular subheading again it takes me to that particular place in the document. So we gain a couple of advantages by setting our document up in that way. Uh, I would also recommend in your document, in your Word document, you set your document properties because what we benefit from if we set our document properties back in Word is that we see here in the document properties in Acrobat, it's carried this information across and uh, this information can be tapped into by a range of modern search engines so it's just gen more generally uh, makes our document easier to find. Radio. So that's using the built-in conversion process and we can see what happens with Acrobat Reader. In the third part of this tutorial we will have a look at what happens when we've got Acrobat Standard or Professional and we convert using the built-in tools that allow Acrobat and Word to work together. So thank you for your attention and I hope you'll watch part three.